This is going to be about uh, Ming Dynasty porcelain, the connection between that, Japanese katana swords, and Aikido. So uh, the, the Ming Dynasty lasted from 1572 to 1620, and during that period it was in uh, southwestern China. Uh, the area was filled with kaolin clay and uh, kitsune stone. And that's they would grind it up and cook it at uh, 1450 degrees uh, Celsius to make uh, porcelain. And it was a major export uh, thing for the for the dynasty. Uh, it's mainly uh, colored with a cobalt blue and copper red. And after it's fired, they generally put a glaze on it. And sometimes they would put an overglaze on it, and that'll be this one. This was a good example of an overglaze. Uh, anyway, they would they would they would use the firing of it uh, with the clay, and that uh, that that process was uh, exported to Japan. The technology, and when they uh, started forging uh, the 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 Japanese uh, swords, the the katanas really took off after that technology was. Uh, imported into Japan so uh, what they did was not only was the katana sharp but it was uh, and hardness denotes sharpness but it was also flexible because they would uh, line the one side with uh, clay that would uh, cause it to cool different than the other side with a sharp edge so it would be both strong and flexible uh, also the uh, the blade itself would be shaped much like your hand, like a pseudo chop. Uh, before that, uh, before the 16th century, the samurai were using uh, a lot of double-edged swords at the time. Well, the uh, Musashi Miyamoto, the famous swordsman, uh, won 52 battles, which back then was basically unheard of because infection would get you if you got even hurt a little bit. Uh, that's when the predominance of the single blade katana took off. Here's a good example of the bowls. Uh, also, there was an Islamic influence because of the trade routes. Now, later on, they made so much money doing this that they would put uh, English heraldry on it and whatnot, whatever you wanted, whatever you wanted. That's, uh, and this is the cobalt blue. Pretty cool looking stuff. Well, anyway, so, uh, the, the swords ended up being uh, the double-edged swords still had their place but it was the single-edged katana which took which took off and if you ever get a chance to read Musashi's Book of Five Rings he wrote it he stayed in the cave for days writing it and then he died right after he wrote it basically but it's the Book of Five Rings and the Five Rings are the five elements spirit, earth, water, stone, and wood uh, excuse me, uh, the earth and, and void. Void is the other one. And here's some more. These are actually king dynasties. Uh, this is the, the, the one that followed. But they had porcelain too, obviously. We'll go back to the, to the end. This one has an underglaze on it, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then let's go to the, to the, to the third and final hook up here which would be the uh, relevance to that to Aikido so uh, O-sensei the founder of Aikido he studies various forms he was very proficient in uh, a jiu-jitsu form called uh, Diato Ru so basically all the holds in Aikido are Diato Ru holds well he disappeared for about 12 years into China and in China he learned uh, Bagua Chong and a little bit of Sing He and when he came back he was nobody could even touch him so he he never he, he basically didn't want to say that he learned you know this Chinese martial art because people in Japan looked down on China so he just said that the goddess Amasutra revealed to him this fighting form well it is and if you if you watch really good Aikido guys. It's a, Aikido is a mixture of Japanese sword fighting, 
Diado Ru Jiu Jitsu, and element and the application is uh, Bagua Chong with a little bit of Sing He, and uh, the Aikido uh, is based on six pillars: uh, free fighting, uh, spirit of breathing throws, entering and turning locks and pins, the four directional throw, which is the cardinal. Uh, move in Aikido and then weapons and the the three most common weapons are uh, staff sword and there's a, a lesser known one of oh in the, the short the short stick and then the lesser known one because he served in World War one was uh, fighting with with a, a bayonet with a rifle butt so you had a club uh, uh, a bludgeon weapon with a sharp and on the other side. So that, that's a, a little known weapon of Aikido that you won't see. Here's some more examples of overglaze. So they put the, the copper, the red copper and the cobalt blue and then put the glaze on it, fired that and then put even more colors on the outside and makes a real good relief. So anyway, that's the connection between porcelain which led to increased, uh, increased tensile strength and increased toughness in Japanese swords from uh, the use of firing with uh, the kale and clay. Of course, the Japanese didn't have kale and clay, but they, they had clay, and the technology moved over there to uh, for uh, sword culture over there. And then, and then uh, you know, as the sword culture took effect, uh, O-sensei was a product of the sword, sword culture, and he went back to China, and then the feedback loop for uh, basically the eight trigon boxing uh, incorporated in, into his new sport called Aikido. So uh, when you look at a piece of porcelain, uh, you know you can make the jump to there to the increase in uh, toughness of, of samurai swords, katanas, and uh, jump over to Aikido. Uh, anyway, check all that stuff out there. Uh, if you like this video, uh, subscribe to uh, any one of my YouTube channels, Pat Moynihan, Patrick Moynihan, Edward Moynihan. I also have a website, timbosplace.com. Uh, thank you. Bye.